I did a code review for one of my students and this false positive assertion caught my attention so I thought it's going to be a useful YouTube video. So let's look into this scenario. Very simple. We first create a new specialty using API, then we go to the specialties page, we validate that this specialty was created, then we delete the specialty, reload the page and validate the specialty is deleted. Where all this happens, right here on the specialties page on the pet clinic application. We add the specialty and then delete the specialty, making sure that is deleted. Uh, let's run this test first of all, and I'll show you that it seems like it is working fine. So they're running the test and the specialty was deleted and the test passed successfully, all green, everything is fine. But there is a catch and uh, there are actually two problems with this test. First of all, let me temporarily remove this page reload. So the idea behind this page reload is when we delete the specialty, we want to reload the page, making sure that we actually cleared the list of the specialties. And when the list is clear, then we validate that the specialty was deleted. Actually, logically, this is the right move but it does not work the way you may expect it to work. So I temporarily just remove it and we'll show you later on. Now let's look into this guy. So we have a locator over here, get by text API testing expert. To validate if this assertion uh, false positive or not, let's change it to something that we know exists on the page for sure and that this assertion should fail. For example, we can take this dentistry specialty because we create API testing expert specialty. We delete the specialty, but dentistry still will be there. So let me replace this assertion with the dentistry. And if everything is fine, then this assertion should fail, but it will not. And let me show you that. So running this test one more time and it's launching the browser. We create the specialty, we delete the specialty, and then we look into the test and tests still passed. Look, so we expect the dentistry should not be visible, but it's clearly over there, but assertion passed. Why did this happen? Uh, the problem with the locator, because the locator is get by text dentistry. And the problem that this dentistry is not the text. This is the input field as well as these input fields. And when you are dealing with input fields, you cannot use get by text uh, because it's literally not a text. Get a text work only for HTML text. So specialties is the text, home and add text on the button is the text. All these menus are the text, but values inside of the input field are not. And also a uh, quite tricky part. Previously, there was used a correct locator, get by role name API testing expert. So when you use get by role and provide a visible text, Playwright somehow figuring out uh, what this name is related to. Is it a text or is it a value? It doesn't matter. Playwright somehow can handle this. So if we replace this get by text to a more correct locator, such as this get by role, with the row uh, of uh, name of our specialty and we replace it with uh, dentistry and I put it, it right here and run this test one more time and now we expect that this test should fail because we corrected locator uh, so that was deleted and we go in back and yeah and now assertion failed because we provided the correct locator we clearly see that this row available on the page, playwright also see it, and locator assertion after five millisecond timeout failed. Now let me go to one step forward and I re-enable page reload. Remember the code that was here and the idea behind the page reload is that after deleting the specialty, we want to refresh the state of our application, making sure that deleted specialty is not there and we clearly make an assertion that specialty is not there. And let's try to run this test one more time. So I'm running the test, same exact test, not changing anything else. So running the test, we delete the API testing expert specialty going back. And now assertion passed for some reason. But we clearly saw that when we were using this locator, assertion failed. But why is it passed right now? And the answer is, so look, if I go back to the app, so let me close this one and I open here in the browser. If I click a refresh, look, there is a spinner on the page. And when I make a reload, 
no specialties are displayed on the page at that particular moment. And this is what's happening in the script. So when we call page reload, Playwright does not wait while the page actually complete reloading on the page. When we execute the reload, the state of the application was a spinner and uh, no specialties displayed at all. And that's why Playwright see, oh, there is no specialty with the name dentistry. It is not visible. Then we pass the test. You see how tricky is this? And uh, if you have a case, for example, when your application loading the entire thing, you need absolutely wait for the right state of the application. And example of this can be, and a, a good rule of thumb, is to wait for some API response that your application is dependent on. In our example, we depend on this API specialties and point that is loading the details to the uh, specialty page. And I can uh, add something like await page wait for response and provide this API endpoint that I'm dependent on. So I put this specialties. This is a get call that's happening in the background. And now I'm running this test one more time. And uh, right now we should create, delete, then reload. And after the reload, the test should fail. Why? Because we were waiting for API response to be completed. So all the specialties will be loaded and then the dentistry will be displayed on the page. And then we validate it. It's not visible, but it is visible. So the test fail. So in other way, uh, we don't need these two steps and we need just to put everything as is and this is the right implementation for this test running this test one more time and this test should work right now as expected all right and test pass successfully also alternatively you can replace this assertion instead of just not to be visible you can replace it with to have value not to have value since this is an input field but to be visible or not to be visible it also good enough all right guys i hope this was useful demonstration of how false positive assertion works when you're creating a negative assertions always make sure that it is not false positive by just providing a different value intentionally failing your test that way you will make sure that when real issue happen with your app this assertion will catch a defect. If you like this kind of reviews and want me to review your code and provide you feedback about your implementation, sign up to my Playwright UI Testing Mastery course, where in practice assignments, you will complete many, many different exercises and I will provide you feedback about implementation so you will develop a real hands-on skills. If you have any questions, let me know and please like and subscribe this video and I'll see you next week.